.NET Core 3.1 Preview 1 is out, and in this video, we are going to explore how to update our Blazor WebAssembly application into this new version of .NET Core, and besides that, we are going to learn what is new in this version of .NET Core. So first thing first, you need to go to this URL, which I will share in the description of this video, and then to get started, you have to come to this section and install the latest .NET Core 3.1 SDK, which is going to be Preview 1. Besides that, if you want to use Visual Studio, you need to also download the latest preview of Visual Studio 2019 version 16.4. And finally, you need to copy this command and you need to go to PowerShell if you are on Windows and paste it here and press enter and this will install the latest templates for Blazor WebAssembly. After doing that, you will be ready to work with .NET Core 3.1 Preview 1. Now, the first thing that we are going to do in this video is to update our Blazor WebAssembly application so that it uses .NET Core 3.1 Preview 1. There are actually just two changes that we have to do, and that is to target .NET Core App 3.1 and update the package reference to version 3.1. Let's do that. I will go to Visual Studio. I have our Blazor Core app that we have been building throughout these tutorials. I'll go to the Solution Explorer. I will open the .server project and I will see that we have a target framework here and I will modify this .NET Core app 3.0 to .NET Core app 3.1. That is the first step. And now onto the second step. I am going to take this I will select it, I will press Ctrl H and I will do a replace all, replacing this package version of Preview 9, 3.0 to 3.1 Preview 1. This text that I have here comes from the blog post. It is this text that it is here. And I am going to do a replacement throughout the entire solution. Now I will press replace all, I will say yes, and that's it. We have made the update here and if we go to the Solution Explorer and we go to the Client Project, we will see that the package reference that are here has also been updated to version 3.1 Preview 1. Now, let's test our application. I will press Ctrl F5 and the idea now is to make sure that our application is working correctly. We can see that our application is working, we can go to counter, we can use the counter component, we can go to fetch data, and we can go to our people component, and we see that we have our pagination working, so everything seems to be working. Great. Now, let's explore the two new characteristics of .NET Core 3.1 for Blazor. Let's go back to the blog post and see them. The first one is that there is now partial class support for Razor components. The idea here is that let's go back to Visual Studio and let's go to the counter component and we will see that in a component we typically have HTML code and C -sharp code in the same file. Now that's not necessarily an issue but for some people it would be better to have the HTML and the C -sharp separated into different files. What we had to do before was to use inheritance to achieve this, but now in .NET Core 3.1 we can use partial classes. With partial classes I can declare the same class in different places and in the end the C -sharp compiler is going to merge all the instances of the partial class. For example, here we have our counter.razor component and razor components are rendered as classes, which means that this is going to be compiled into a counter class. Now this class is going to be partial, which means that we can do the following. I can go here, I can right click on pages, class, and I will create a counter class. And I will declare it as partial. And now I can have these two declarations of the counter class. This one, that it is partial, and the one for the component that it is also going to be partial. Which means that I can take this code, I can cut it, and I can paste it here, and I can bring these namespaces, 
this one also. And now we have the C sharp code of our counter component here and the HTML part in the razor file here. Again, this is something that some people may prefer, especially with components that are large enough that could benefit from a separation of concerns into different files. You can see that if I click here and I press F12, I am going to be brought back to this counter class. And if I press Ctrl F5, we can test our application and I can go to the counter component and you can see that the counter component is still working. So this is the first feature of .NET Core 3.1 for Blazor. The second one is that now top level components can have parameters. The idea here is that if you have an ASP.NET Core web application that it is not a Blazor application and you want to use a Razor component, you can use HTML.RenderComponentAsync. And sometimes those components may need to receive a parameter. Before in ASP.NET Core 3.0, this was not possible. If you try to do that, you will get an exception, but now it is possible. Let's see an example. Let's create a new project here, just for testing, new project, ASP.NET Core web application. I'll click on next. I'll just call it web application one. I'll click on create. Let's choose a web application. And as you can see, I am using ASP.NET Core 3.1. I'll click on create and we have our project here. And now what we want to do is to copy a component from our client application just to have something to work with. I will choose this survey prompt component, which have a title parameter. I'll copy it and I'll just paste it here. And now we want to use this survey prompt component and we want to pass data to this title parameter. For that, I can come to the index.cshtml and I can use the following code. I can say await HTML render component async and here I will put the name of the component. In this case, it is survey prompt and now I will say render mode server pre render and here I will pass an anonymous type and here the properties of this anonymous type are going to be the parameters of the component. In our case, it is title. And for title, I will just choose Gavilange 3, of course. Again, as you can see, if we go to the Solution Explorer, if we go to the Survey Prone component, we have a parameter here, which we want to supply a value to. And the name of the parameter is title. That is why here I am saying title equal to, in this case, Gavilange 3. And now let's go back here and let's choose this project as the startup project. And now, I will press Ctrl F5 to run our application. And here we have our survey prompt component and we have the title render as Gavilange 3 as we expected. So in this video, we learned the new characteristics that .NET Core 3.1 Preview 1 offers us for Blazor. And besides that, we learned that there are no breaking changes for Blazor in this preview, but we have two new characteristics to use. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and let me know what you want me to cover next. Thanks.